on. It's on. I don't want to say that. <laughs> it's Sunday. It is Sunday. August. 26, 2018. Yeah. Woohoo! 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 And we are. A close knit family. Coming to you from Armstrong in the beautiful North Okanagan of British Columbia, Canada. Mm -hmm. We are a knit cast. Yep. I'm wearing knitting. Yes. Which is a good indication that it's a lot cooler today than it has been, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was something else, uh, uh, Nick Cass, North Okanagan. The skies around Armstrong? Nick Cass, oh, welcome! Hi! Welcome back! If you're a regular viewer, you would know that that whole mind fart that just happened is fairly common. <laughs> uh, welcome to new viewers, we're mm -hmm. happy you could join us, mm -hmm. and we hope we can bring you something that you might enjoy. Yeah. All right. So yeah, what is happening in the skies around Armstrong? Uh, smoke? No. Well, a little bit. A little bit of smoke. Lots of smoke. Rain. It's raining, which is good. A little bit of rain. A little bit of rain. Without, like, storm. Yeah. So no high winds for yeah. the fires. Yeah. And no lightning. Yeah. At least in this area. Yeah. It would be nice if it was a little bit heavier rain. Yeah. But a little bit of rain is good. Mm -hmm. And as you can see from this picture, mm -hmm. we can now see some of the mountains around us again, which is really nice. Yeah. It's uh, feeling just fresher. Yeah. All around. So yeah. here's the one from when it was like really bad. Yeah. So you can compare the two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we've brought you, you know, skies around Armstrong. That's what because we've brought you the stink. Yep. And the we mosquitoes. the mosquitoes and the hot. Yep. And now the smoke. Yep. So we'll see what comes next. Yep. The leaves. Well, not, not, next it'll, next it'll be the the smell of cow manure because of or and hay because of the IPE. Yeah. That's mostly the noise of the IPE. We're True. very close to the fairgrounds, so we just sort of have, we get to sit at home and experience the noise and excitement. And every night, the rodeo from yeah. 8 to 10? Something like that. Yeah. Thump, 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 thump. Oh, the music. Anyway, it's all good. Okay, so other things just going on. We're visiting with Auntie Kathy. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm hoping to get a picture of my sister. Mm -hmm. Might not, so no promises. Yeah. But if if we do, you'll meet yeah, Auntie yeah, Kathy yeah. here. Fair I enough. gave her my um the tilted cowl I just knit. Oh. I cool. thought, I'd been thinking of her when I knit it. Yep. And so I gave her the tilted cowl and she said that gold color will go really well with her raincoat. That's good. Um Kathy lives in Vancouver. Yep. So um and she commutes on the bus and stuff back and forth to work, so there you go. The tilted cowl will be, mm -hmm. we'll be playing with her. Now, we have some kind of exciting news. I'm very, I'm excited. <sighs> Something I've sort of had been wanting to make happen for a little while. Just, yeah. just, just for fun. I scribbled some things. Anyway, we have a logo! Oh! Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Yeah. We have a logo, and here it is. So yeah, it's uh, if you can't tell, <laughs> it's supposed to be like a, well, really sort of a, a yarn barf, a little bit, with knitting needles in it. Yep. And and my pretty eyes watching Mike on no, his. Oh, I... we never said what our what our knit cast is about. Oh. It's my adventures as a beginner knitter and slow down. My my adventures as a beginner knitter and Sue's ongoing yarn and knitting addiction. That'd be me. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I had a girlfriend kind of put it together for me, and um, and I'm really happy with it. I didn't tell you. Well, I sort of told you, but. I, I I got some branded merchandise. Ooh. 
we might do some giveaways with that stuff. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I like it too much and want to keep it Because <laughs> <laughs> that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's the type of thing that could happen. So, this is our episode 21. Yeah. Okay. I apologize for last episode because Mike and I were just so sort of like, yay, we're recording an episode together mm. instead of in parts and that, and I didn't make proper notes. And, <laughs> and, and so we were kind of all over the place yeah. and stuff. So anyway, and didn't, weren't thinking about what this episode was just like, yay, let's record. And we had, anyway, so apologize for that. So now that we're at episode 21, and we have over 100 subscribers we on our YouTube, indeed. and consider we celebrated at 20. 20. <laughs> so now that we have over 100 subscribers, yeah. and we have our new logo launch. Yeah! Woohoo! We decided to do another giveaway. Giveaway! So this time, three... Three of you. Three lucky winners. Yes. Are going to get a set of Cool Cam's stitch markers. Mm-hmm. We keep pulling out this one. This is the coolest set. Anyway, anyway, Cool Cam's. These Cool Cam called the like confused stitch marker or something because one <laughs> end is a stitch marker and the other end is a progress keeper. So that was fun. If you want the story on Cool Cam's um, stitch markers, stitch markers, how they came to be and why they're called Cool Cam stitch markers. Episode nineteen. Nineteen. Yes. Those are so. There's just there's all sorts of little different ones. Mm -hmm. And we'll send you some of those. And we'll send you some of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool Cam made these. Yes, Cool Cam did. And one of the agreements we had with Cool Cam mm -hmm. when he did these was that every time we talked about his markers, talked about Cool Cam's markers, we would show Cool Cam's picture. Yes, we would. So we're excited to be. So we'll pick those up later. We're excited to be sharing Cool Cam's stitch markers mm -hmm. with Cool Cam's fans. Yes. I'm sure Cool Cam would be very happy to know that Cool Cam's stitch markers are going out to such wonderful people. Yes. Yes. So lucky you, anyone who gets Cool Cam's stitch markers. How are you going to win Cool Cam's stitch markers? How indeed. How indeed. We wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, or we didn't, as the case may be. Yes, we did. Right oh, there. there it is. So, below, oh god, I hate it when people do that. In the comments below! In the comments below, just scroll down to them. It took me a really long time to figure out how to find the comments. <laughs> I know! Well, you're always on your tablet, and they're and way it, down there on your tablet. And so. if we're talking about show notes, there's a little down arrow that gets you to the show notes. Anyway, in the comments below, Cool Cam, <laughs> mention or tell us what your favorite episode is. Mm -hmm. and, and what? And why. And why. You can, I mean, you can go by episode number or name, mm -hmm. but tell us why yeah. it's your favorite episode. Anyway, we'll do a random draw from yeah. the entries, Yep. and three lucky winners will be sending six markers to. So we will uh, look at those names. I would say you need to enter by Friday, Just which be safe, yeah. would be the 30th. First. 31st. Yes, because Saturday is the first. So. So August 31st, 2018. Mm hmm. Because sometimes we record on Saturdays. I'm not sure what we're doing next week. Uh, but no, I mean, who knows? It's a week away. It'll probably be Saturday. So there's that for Cool Cam's stitch markers. Made by Cool Cam himself. Comment below what's your favorite episode and why. Yes. 
Yay! Okay, so that's happening. Yeah! Yay! 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 One episode. Woo! Our new logo. Yay! And um, over 100 subscribers. Over 100 YouTube subscribers. Yay! Yeah. This is not tea. This is coffee. Cafe. On this side, it's tea. But it's still, but it's still coffee, coffee, not cafe or tea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so I said this is what we were going to talk about, and then I didn't bring them. Did you bring yours? I did not bring mine. So, our next uh, thing... <laughs> is our foes. Um, Mike's going to talk about his whip. Yep. Well, I go and get what we need for our foe. Yeah. Well, I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, Mike. Mine's, mine's on the piano bench. Yeah, I know. Okay. Talk, talk about your... So, of course, my only whip right now is the Yarn Quest 2018 uh, Mystery Knit Along Scarf. So, if you are planning on knitting that and you don't want potential spoilers on the story or what you're going to be, uh, what you're going to be knitting, here's a little uh, indicator of spoilers and this is the time stamp to skip to so that you can avoid all talk about that but in the meantime here we go three two one so not much progress on it this week uh just a couple charts um i can't remember which one i was which one of these i was in but then i got a in the story i have a friend who is helping me fight a uh fight in an ambush and this is my friend i believe that is a demon Demon like demon type person thing, and I'm be and I'm just beginning the uh, the um, uh, chart of the thing that I am fighting. It is going to be made up of two twenty row charts, so that's that's a big boy. Um, but yeah, so this is still in clue two, and of course because it's double knit, here is the other side. And just for those of you who haven't seen the whole thing, here's the whole thing so far. Yeah. So that's my whip. That's my whip. Pay no attention to the woman behind the curtain. Oh, what curtain? There's no curtain. Okay. Hi. Hi. We're back. You're back. Okay, so because neither of us have any foes, <laughs> <laughs> no finished objects happening here, we thought that we would uh, show you what we've chosen for our entries into the IPE, the mm -hmm. Interior Provincial Exhibition, which yes, is indeed. the largest agricultural e agricultural exhibition in Western Canada, if you exclude the PE in mm -hmm. Vancouver and the Calgary Stampede. Yeah. We're yeah, we're the biggest one between those two. Well, we're Western Canada. Yeah. Western Canada yeah. includes Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Oh, true. Alberta. Anyway, and it's like just down the block yep. from us. <laughs> so um, yeah, we thought we should we should participate this year. Yeah. Why not with some knitting? Yeah. So Mike, what so, are you entering? I am entering my tilted cowl. What category are you entering? Uh, in, in the in the beginner knitters less than one year knitting category, which is apparently new this year. So kind of. Lucky on that. Um, nice. Something like that. So yeah, my my tilted cowl, which we did as a knit along a little while ago, and uh, yeah, I'll be. Well, this is what I'll be entering. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Um, I can't remember exactly what the categories are for the things that I'm entering in because honestly, the categories are kind of weird. They made it actually kind of hard to enter things. Oh. So, one thing that I'm entering though, I am wearing. Ooh. Here, oh, hi. So, I think this is going in um, the cardigan. <laughs> this is my, um, I call it a stroll in the orchard. It's a mm -hmm. pattern that I made. I need to um, just calm this little bit of blocking down so it doesn't stick out like a... Uh, Anyway, Stroll in the Orchard with Midnight Cravings yarn. It has a, here, check out my boobs. Okay, it has a leaf pattern on it. And it's a fade. And mm -hmm. there's that. Um, Stroll in the Orchard. Then they have a, this year's theme for... 
The IPE is is uh, sheep. Did I bring both of them? I don't know. Shoot, I have to go get my other one. Sheep thrills. Okay, well, and, anyway, if it's not this, it'll be no. It's going to be the other one. Anyway, that's okay. Um, so they have a category for if if you used a hundred percent wool. Mm -hmm. So I, I was torn between this skirt, which is a pattern by Sylvia Olson, um, using the Salish style of knitting. It's 100% wool. Um, I think it was Cascade Eco. I do recall you working with Eco. So. But what sort, what defines the Salish style, so you've got the, okay, one, the, it's always done in the round. Two, the way the color work is carried, it's not, it's not stranded, it's it, every stitch is twisted with your color work. And so on your reverse side, it should look very pebbled. As you see, there's no long floats or nice. strands. So that is peek -a -boo. Peek -a -boo. Um, That is how a Salish, a couple of the identifying factors for a Salish style. Mm -hmm. um, so this was in Sylvia Olson's book, Knitting Stories. I think we've talked about that before. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So that will be for the 100% um, wool category. Yes. No, I think this one was going in the... Okay, anyway, there's like an accessory category. So I think I'm going to enter... The, my butterfly papillon shawl. Butterfly papillion. Papillion, yeah. Pavilion. We're, we're still not sure what it's called exactly. Um, so I have two of them. There's this one, and this was knit with uh, Malabrigo is the black, and the color uh, the colors are from a crazy zauber ball. And they just kind of happen, which is a nice thing about this pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, this is another one. You just sort of catch a corner of it back here, um, which is very multicolored. I think it's going to be this one because I, anyway, yeah. I, think, I think that's the one. I have tomorrow. We enter them tomorrow. So yeah. I have to know by then. And then the other one. Oh, did you actually sew this up? Well, I've been wearing it. Oh! And we've shown it on here before, yes, too. Yes, we have. Anyway, I'm also going to enter the What the Hell Was I Thinking sweater. Here, you hold that side. You got that side? Um, so this is a Kaif facet pattern in Intarja. Um, if we turn it around... Like I say, I can't remember exactly what the categories are all, are all called. Um, yeah, this is called the Long Leaf Coat by Kay Facet. I chose not to put sleeves on it because these go down to my elbows already. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's a, it's this huge sweater. Ugh. So, those are the things I'll be entering. I might change up the skirt for a little bolero shrug. That's also Salish knit. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Those are our foes slash what are you entering in the IP? Yes. And by next week, we'll know how we did. Yeah. Okay. Acquisitions. Acquisitions. So I'm going to start with, some, uh, with an almost acquisition. I know. So... My husband, who's now been retrained, so I'm I'm forgiving him for this first faux pas because <laughs> he's now been properly trained. Just forgive him, okay? <laughs> We're not gonna hold this against him. And you know, Melissa was there and explained to him what he was doing wrong. He didn't believe her. So we just go with it. Anyway, so my darling <sighs> husband was in Cranbrook, British Columbia. Yep. Cranbrook, BC. And they went to a um, community fair festival mm -hmm. thing. And he came across 
Nicole from Happy Homes Fiber Arts. And he, later on, and there's her Instagram and Facebook. Later on, he sent me a picture and said, look what I saw today. And I said, so you bought yarn? And he said, no. no. <laughs> Like, oh, you dingus. beautiful man, you. You dingus. <laughs> so I contacted Nicole and um, I said, hey, I love your yarn because I checked out some of the pictures of, of her yarn and stuff. It looks beautiful. Um, and yes, she ships and she is has been posting... Um, that she's getting some of her yarn into some shops and stuff and so some really nice yarn mm -hmm. uh, another BC dyer I mm -hmm. love finding out about the dyers around BC mm -hmm. uh, so check out Happy Homes Fiber Arts and you never know you might find something you like there mm -hmm. yep 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 yeah 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 so that was an almost an acquisition. Yes. But. But. My ex Oh, I need that card that fell down there. Can you grab it? Uh, With the things. But. I got yarn mail. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> um, I got yarn mail from. Whoops. My finger's covering it up. That's so me. From Mud Punch. Chantel of Mud Punch. Chantel does, in my mind, just amazing self-striping colors for sock yarn. It's an 80-20 uh, Merino Super Wash, yes, and nylon. Three, uh, 100, oh, okay. Chantel, help me out here. You can't go grams to yards on me. <laughs> you can go you can go grams to meters and ounces to yards. But help me out. Okay, so we got 110 grams and 385 yards. So that is one of the colorways. And this one is called Quiet Branching Out. And I also got this one which is called Deer Fest 98 obviously I've already caked it don't have to be a genius to figure that out and I have started knitting it up and I just mm -hmm. I love the colors they're not yeah. they're bright and some of them are obviously you know not not as like bright but the colors are so saturated mm -hmm. I just I just really love them yeah really um, did, I already said this was quiet branching out I think so yeah beautiful colors and I managed to pick up a um, believe it or not it was hard to find a contrast but I picked up a contrast color um, to do some contrast heels so it's sort of like it's I think it's whoops what am I showing you there we go I think it'll go quite nicely as a contrast with that one but I think I might also like for some fun be able to use it with this one too mm -hmm. so that makes me happy so that's a drops fable and it is a uh, what am I 75 wool 25 polymede so so there's there's that and I am doing, yes, two at a time. I, you know what, I've tried doing different sort of textured socks, but I'm just, vanilla socks, I think vanilla striped socks are kind of my jam. I do two at a time. I'm going to do shorty socks, and using the contrast, um, I'm hoping that I can get two pairs of shorty socks out of one skein. So there's that. So that is acquisitions and whips for me um, and oh and it's also nice Chantel also included just a nice handwritten note 
in with the order. And did I say it's vac? She said ships vacuum packed. You did not mention that. Which is the best thing. Mm -hmm. The best thing. It saves so much on shipping fees and stuff. And so, yay, vacuum packing. I'm getting mixed up because I put my notes on. Okay, yarn colors. Oh, and the yarn. Oh my gosh, it feels so. Feel that. Feel that. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I just love it. That is very nice. Now, and today, as I happen to be scrolling through my Instagram, um, I, doesn't matter. Oh, okay, good. I noticed that Chantel is offering a, like, here comes fall special. So 15% off all of her yarns both in store and pre-orders mm. she has so many she, every day she posts a uh, i guess potential colorway they're beautiful Ooh. follow Chantel, follow mud punch on instagram do it i just i love her stuff um so for the 15 percent off um obviously you need to order from her and use the code 15FALL18, and that's good until August 31st. So I just, if you like striping yarns, I think even for, because look how, like, they're nice wide stripes. This is mm -hmm. a 64 stitch um, sock. They're nice wide stripes for, like, a, um, a sock sleeve sweater. You gotta check out her colorways. They're fantastic. Anyway, enough about that. Mud punch acquisitions. Mud punch. I did that. Okay. Yeah. What else? So that's so we're on whips, right? So that's yeah. a whip. That's a whip. As you know, I have I started pulling my whips out to show my sister, and I have way too many. Hmm. So I decided I'm only ever gonna show stuff that I actually worked on. What, and I'm not going, my, so my big sweater, the one I'm designing, we're not looking at that today because honestly it looks pretty much the same as it always has. I'm just working down the body. I'm getting the, the um, <sighs> getting those pockets in and um, just remembering that that's my, um, as you knit it, it's finished sweater. So no, no finishing stuff once like when you cast off you're done mm -hmm. so that's great but i did work a little bit on brioche on my brioche Yay. but again you know to the naked eye it looks exactly the same <laughs> as it did last time because um and this is this is what it is and it's going to go to well it's supposed to be eight inches i probably won't do it that wide um and this is the brioche i'm knitting for the brioche along mm -hmm. Which you should get in on. I didn't look. Am I still the only one? I haven't looked either. I may still be the only one in there. So if you've been doing some brioche, you've got till the end of this week, the 31st. Mm -hmm. To get some brioche in to, there. Um, to get in there. So do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so last week when I showed this, and I said this is special for my friend Susan... And I said, but Susan doesn't watch. You know, hi, Susan. I know you're not watching. Well, hi, Susan. Once again, I know you're not watching. <laughs> <laughs> because she was watching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? So, okay. So that's my whip. You okay, did your I whip. Okay, I did my whip. I'm fairly monogamous right now. So. And now we're at what Mike brings to the table. Yes. And, and I'm just going to take over a momentary segment of what Mike brings to the table because I like to talk and it's all about me. <laughs> okay. So last week... It was D&D. You guys helped, or not helped, you, you guys were you involved watched, in part of the process. You watched as mom starts so making her So now character. I need to start rolling dice apparently to figure things out with Eventually, that character. Yes. I'm still developing my character. Okay. But we haven't started playing yet. No. So Mike went and got me my own dice. Mm-hmm. I asked her what her favorite color was. She said green. And those were the best green ones I could find that weren't like premium dice. So. So, whoops. Let me. So, anyway, so there you go. I am now the proud owner of. 
A, Dice. A set of polyhedrals. A uh, set of polyhedrals. That's what I am now. <laughs> okay, and as Mike has previously stated, the little container that the <laughs> dice come in, it's a great notions container. It is. It really is. Nice tight fitting lid. Mm -hmm. So get your dice. Get Everyone. Dice. <laughs> Everyone needs polyhedral dice. I, I realized the other day that, yeah, ma, um, yarn, no, dice to me is yarn to mom. I love collecting dice, so I have yeah. lots. Yeah. And my collection is actually quite small compared to some of my friends. Anyway, Mike. <laughs> what I bring to the table today is another one where I don't really have a box that I can hold up, but I do have something I can hold up. Uh, today I am recommending for you the game Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a partially part video game, part real game of bomb defusal. It's where so much one, one person on the computer has a bomb in front of them. And the bomb has various modules and they don't know how to defuse the modules. But someone else, sitting in the same room as them, presumably, has the bomb defusal manual. But this person is not allowed to look at the bomb. And the person who's, who's operating the bomb is not allowed to look at the manual. So, you have to communicate. And, and, and navigate this book and figure out what modules you're looking at and how to defuse them. And it's all... Incredibly good. It's all very good. Tense fun. Uh, it's currently, I believe it's currently only available on PC. You have to have the game, of course. Uh, you can play it in VR, virtual reality, if you have a virtual reality headset. It is coming to... Oh no, it's also on consoles. And it is also coming to the Nintendo Switch, which I'm happy about because that is going, that means I'll have a portable version and I won't have to lug my computer around every time I want to play that game. So yeah, keep talking and nobody explodes. Pick it up. It's so much fun. It really is. It's so much fun because the person who's, who's got the bomb in front of them is saying, okay, I'm looking at Wires. Wires, or I'm looking at switches, and... Okay, I, well, there's two know. different wires, which kind of, which yeah. way are the wires... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a good, it's a good time. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can try and do the same thing again and mm. again, and... It'll be different every time, and... Yeah, it's, it's good fun. So, yeah, thanks for that one, Mike, because, yeah, yeah that, that one, I'd forgotten about that one. It's fun. Actually, you know, I was thinking about it the other day, and then I was trying to remember... What it was called. Ooh. Yeah. What, what had happened to it. Yeah. All right. So, now I want to tell you a little story. Uh-oh. So, as we, I've mentioned a few times, I go knitting on Saturday mornings. I go to the Vernon Library. Mm -hmm. And we meet up in one of the community rooms. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we knit. Mm -hmm. So, that's one part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of the story is, I yes, once upon a time I had a library card. Mm -hmm. Um, probably you were in preschool. Probably, yeah. So, long time ago. I've never really been a big library person because I like to have my books and I like to be able to refer to them again and I don't like somebody telling me I have to give it back in a certain time period. Like, just don't do that. And then it's like, oh man, and then I have to make a special trip to the library. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, my husband is all about the library. He's yeah. going like every week and he's yeah. reserving books and he's always got books. And yeah. I, I like to own my books. Yes. So anyway, so there's that. Then the other part of the story is that lately I've been, everything that I've been wanting to kind of um, patterns or um, things that I've been wanting to do, I've been thinking... Oh, I, I need to get my hands on that book. I, I got to buy that book. Mm -hmm. uh, how am I going to get that book? Mm -hmm. um, because where we live, it's a smaller center, so we don't have tons of um, availability for books. I did go to one of the local bookstores, and I was like, where's your knitting section? There were two knitting books. I was like, okay, 
this is not helping. Anyway, so sitting and knitting yesterday and somebody, you know, piped up and asked one of the other ladies, hey, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, you tend to look up. Yeah. So she was sitting there and she had a stack of books in front of her. <laughs> and she said, well, I'm finishing this thing off, but I don't really like what what the pattern calls for so I'm just trying to see if I can figure out a different way to finish it and so okay that's fine right that's good and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this stack of knitting books that she has in front of her mm -hmm. and I was like wow we're in a library <laughs> Consider that. Oh my god! <laughs> they might, they even have like knitting books. And I would, <laughs> I could, I could actually go and look at books <laughs> without committing to buying them. And if it was a book that I really, really felt I had to keep, I could then go about buying it. Aren't libraries cool? <laughs> so then I was talking with some of the people around me and I was doing my yeah buts, right? You know, so yeah, but you know, then you got to get the book back to the library and someone looked at me and said, aren't we here every week? <laughs> And you have three weeks to hang on to the book. Three weeks to hang on to the book. So anyway, so I went and I checked out the knitting section. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a library card. <laughs> I have a library card. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> so I picked, up, <laughs> I picked up this book, The Magic of Shetland Lace Knitting. <laughs> um I've been I've been really on a on a you know on a Shetland kick. So this is full of um, Shetland lace patterns. Um, I want to use that for some ideas. I have a new pattern in my head that desperately wants to come out, and I need a good lace pattern for that. Mm -hmm. I also picked up more big girl knits. So this is a book that, um, it's got some patterns for some big girl um, stuff in it. It's got some sock patterns and some shrugs. Here is one of the ones that I really, I think that's a super nice top. Um, and yes, I'm a big girl. But there, there's some tips and tricks and hints, you know, how to make your knitted projects look nice on you and how to flatter your attributes mm -hmm. um, so that was that was that one and then I also got the Alice Star Moore charts for color knitting and this is just full of knitting charts and some stories and and some pictures Ooh. and things so I have really wanted to be to do something because I love Alice Starmore's um, patterns, but I haven't like I love them, but nothing's like jumped out at me. So, so there's that. So that's that's this my really just is a whole lot of charts. Yeah, yeah, and there's some great pictures. If you're not familiar with Alice Starmore, you know these are some of her her beautiful sweaters. They're just gorgeous. Fair Isle, um, so she, what's, uh, she's got her, um, her Tudor roses. Some of them are just, are nice. They're cabled, they're fitted. They're very, very nice mm -hmm. sweaters. Um, and and I, I, I wanna do something like that. Oh. Yep. Oh, single motifs. Okay. So then I went to my yarn store to get my contrasting yarn color. And when I was there, 
I started flipping through this book. Now this mm. is from 2016, I think. I think it's from 2016. Anyway, this is another funny story. Cause so I went flipping, I flipped through this book as you tend to do, right? You go flip, 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 flip. And I saw this. Ooh. And I thought, wow, that's a super nice tank. And just with that little in the middle, how flattering. I'm going to get this book. And, well, I saw other stuff in here too. And then I looked at the price. The price was reasonable. I'm going to get the book. So I get the book. Yes. I come home. Yes. Go through all the patterns. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Um, you know, I might do this, I might do that, I could see doing this, I might modify that. Mm -hmm. And then, but, so the only picture in the whole book that doesn't actually have a pattern is that one in the book is that one. <laughs> <sighs> <clears throat> and, hence why I, I didn't, you know, wasn't anxious to buy books. <laughs> so, library. Library. Use it. Use it. <sighs> wow. Wow. Uh. Okay. I feel like... Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, so Knit City preparation. Preparating for so, Knit City. Knit City in Vancouver yes. is coming up. It is. Uh, September 28th through October 1st. Yep. Big event. Yep. I've never been to a big yarn festival before. I've never been to a yarn festival. And I know what I'm like when I can go into a yarn store and I can like, I really like that yarn, but if I don't actually know what I'm going to do with it, I won't, I won't get it mm -hmm. because I don't want to um, run out, mm -hmm. but I also don't, I don't want to have a yarn just sitting looking pretty as pretty as it is. I'm, hmm. not, I'm not rich, so, you know, I really do have to think about these things. So, before I go, I am choosing patterns that I might like to knit. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So, I'm getting an idea of, so I know going in, if I choose to make this pattern, I need this kind of weight, mm -hmm. I'm going to need this many meters, yes. that kind of thing. So, I'm going in with that plan. I'm also, I've sort of done a little research and actually that the, my, my, uh, the more big knits, big girl knits or whatever, it's, mm -hmm. it helped me out a little bit with this. The approximate yardage for sweaters and what have you. So if you just see something, it's like, okay, I want to get a sweaters quantity in that. I'm not yep. entirely sure what I'm going to make. Yep. So I've got that information. Yep. I have a list of the accessories that I would like to check out. Yep. So I'm making like, okay, I should look for this, look for that, look for this. So, cause you get in there and it's overwhelming and then you come to the end and you're like, oh, I never, never got, this. got that ruler. Yep. I never saw any rulers. Um, so this way it's like once you've sort of, when you've done your, ah, then you can go, okay, what else is on my list? Oh, right, I should go back and find that. Because um, we've got two days. Yeah. Um, what else am I doing? Oh, so I've gone through and I've checked out who the vendors are. Mm -hmm. And um, for those that I know, great. For those that I wasn't so familiar with, I went and sort of checked them out to see what kind of things they offered. And I a couple of them... Um, anyway, uh, do personalized engraving on stuff and personalized um, things. So I'm going to try to contact them ahead of time and say, I would like this and I'd like to pick it up at Knit City. That just sort of, to me, that makes sense. Um, then because I, I don't know, I don't know if they'll be able, I doubt they'll be personalizing on site. I, who knows but it makes more sense like for everyone to order it ahead yeah. and and pick it up there <clears throat> they don't have to sh ship it i don't have to 
pay shipping. Yep. That just makes sense to me. Um, so consider pre-ordering if you're looking at stuff. Um, the other thing I would strongly recommend is if you're going with other people, mm -hmm. get everybody's cell number. Yeah. <laughs> Just so it doesn't mean people are going to be paying that close attention to their phones going off, mm -hmm. but at least have a way of um, getting in contact, with getting them. in contact with the other members of your party. Mm -hmm. But it's worth it to go in ahead of time, check out the vendors and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. They haven't. Last time I checked, there wasn't a floor map. I know some people will actually go in and plan their exact route for mm -hmm. when they get inside, but I, I'm not there. I'm not there. No. But I think going in and having um, a plan is um, probably a, is a good idea. Good idea. Yeah. Instead of just going in cold. Yes. And a budget. Come on, yeah. ladies. Yeah. A budget. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't include when until my credit card starts getting yeah. rejected. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Events. Events. From around. <gasps> All right. So on Saturday, September 1st, mm -hmm. it's next Saturday. Yes. The Southern Wool Show at the Newbury Race Course in Berkshire. Shire. Berkshire. Berkshire. In the UK. Southern Wool Show. Southern Wool Show. Yeah. In Berkshire. In Berkshire in the UK. In Newbury. Cool Cam. <laughs> on. Saturday, September 8th, the Perth Festival of Yarn mm -hmm. at the Doers Centre on Glover Street in Perth, Australia. Ooh. See, I'm trying to get back around the world, but yeah. now we're coming a little bit closer to home again. A right. little bit. Still in another province. On, also on Saturday, September 8th, is the Prairie Fibre Fest Ooh. at... Um, the Lacombe Memorial Center in Lacombe, Alberta. Okay. And I've got to tell you, I kind of want to go to this one. Okay. Even though Knit City's coming up, right? I keep saying, like, okay, stop. Stop, stop Mom. Stop. stop. But. Cool kid. There are um, vendors that are going to be at the Fiber Fest. Okay, who are also going to be there. Who are not. Oh. Going to be in Knit City, and they are people who I whose yarn I would like to see. Ooh. Touch, feel, and experience. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um. So yeah, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna happen. Maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I don't like traveling on the long weekend, and especially not, that would mean going out the number one and the highway between like Revelstoke and the border is just gross. Yeah. It's like non-stop construction. Yeah, and, especially right now. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just like, you know, a wish list in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. I think we've come to the end. I think we've come to the end. Of our previously chosen plans. Yes. Things that we'd yeah. like to do. So, yeah. Yeah. You well, you say things like we should if you like our video, you should like it. To let us know that you like it. Uh give us a comment below, of course entering that giveaway and also just like just you know say hi. Let us know what you think. Uh share the video. Get it out to a greater audience so that hopefully we can grow and do more fun things. Have a 200 subscriber giveaway. And uh, yeah, hit that little bell icon. Lets you know, gives you a notification whenever we upload so that you know as soon as we have uploaded. Um, join our Ravelry group. There's a little introduce yourself thread there. Be sure to introduce yourself and get in on the sock along. The sock along. Did the, we talk about We have not talked about the sock along. It was on our notes to talk about the sock along. We didn't talk about the... Yes, we, we did. We did talk about the brioche along because you talked about brioche, but we did not talk about the sock along. Oh my goodness. The sock along. 
Uh, from now until December 25th, we have a, a long going in our Ravelry group. For every completed set of adult socks that you post in that thread, you are given an entry to the final giveaway. And for every set of socks that you then also donate to... Uh, someone to in need. Someone in need. Someone in need. I, yes. Just someone in need. Uh, you'll get another entry to that giveaway, and also the person who enters uh, the most um, the most donated uh, foes items gets uh, just wins wins one prize automatically. Yeah, and whoever has the most donations. And oh, sorry, I knocked the oh, camera. Shoot. And that that the donation part includes hats, gloves, mitts, mitts, mitts gloves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, let's do a little something, and it goes from now till you December set. 25th. Yeah. Uh, do, do something nice for your for your community and yeah. for um, for someone else. Yeah. Um, but, you know, make socks for yourself, mm -hmm. for gifts, mm -hmm. for, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, we, yeah, we just like to make that a little bit yeah. sort of... And in order to get counted correctly, enter once for your sock being completed, and again... If for, you donate it. If you donate it. So post twice in there. For donated. For donated. Yes. And we just are going to trust you. Yes. Because that's who we are. Mm-hmm. Okay. So back to the wrapping up things. Go to our Ravelry group. Join uh, Join us. Follow our Instagram. Close Knit Family Knit Cast, I think is what you put it as. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you want to send us an email, send us an email at cnfpodcast at gmail.com. Yes, we know it should be a K. Um, and yeah. <laughs> so, I, I made that email, so, yeah. I, so it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, keep, keep your, your family knitting close and, and your, your family closer. closer. Bye. Bye.